Strings are a major data type for us in PHP, and something we'll need to search, parse, and test against very often. Let's look at some of the most common of PHP's built-in string functions. The last function that we were looking at is string length. We were looking at it just to see how we actually utilize string length. Now, let's go ahead over to workspaces. I'm going to toggle over and actually use string length. We're going to look at a few different string functions. So mainly, they're meant to manipulate or look into strings. They might return something other than a string, such as string length is going to return an integer. However, we want to work with strings, so we'll use string functions. Let's start by defining a string. We will call it phrase. And that phrase will be, we only hit what we aim for. All right, going to end that with a semicolon and hit save. Now, what we want to do is look at our string length doc. So it's going to return to us an integer value of how long a string is. So we're going to call string length. So we'll say strlen, all right? Let's just make sure that's correct. strlen, right? And then our argument that we pass through, if you look here on the docs, is a string. So we have our string, which is phrase. So we'll pass through phrase. Okay. And then end it with a semicolon. Now, this won't output anything, but it will run the string length. So we'll actually assign that to a variable and call it len. All right. Now, all we have to do is echo that to our screen. So echo and then len. Okay, let's switch over and preview this. Okay, and we get 27. So we have a total of 27 characters in length uh, in our string. Pretty cool. Okay, so next we're gonna take a look at two different string functions. One of them is gonna be substring, S-U-B-S-T-R. And the other one is going to be um, string pos or string position. So S-T-R-P-O-S. So let's go over and open up a page for the docs and find substring and uh, string position. So we'll go ahead and copy that. I'll create a new one here. And then we're going to paste in substring, and it says return part of a string. So you'll see here that in the definition or in the description, we're going to return part of a string. It's going to return to us a string value. It's expecting two arguments. The first argument is string or whatever string we want to look through. The second is an integer value from where it wants to start. So we can start at the first position or so many positions uh, by character down the string. Then if you notice in the square brackets, that means it's optional, but we can pass through an optional link. So let's go ahead and play with this now inside of workspaces. So we'll do that by go ahead and using the keyword or the function substring, so S-U-B, S-T-R. Then we're going to pass through the first argument, which is um, the actual phrase. Okay, and then the second one is where we want to start. So we want to start from a zero-based position, so we'll hit zero. And then we'll go ahead and close this and then hit save. And that's going to start from position one, and it's going to return the entire string. So let's actually echo that out directly and see what we get back. So I'm we'll going to switch back over to our preview, and then we see we only hit what we aim for. Now, that's just returning the whole string. But what if we wanted to start from, say, so many characters in? So let's head back over, and we're going to pass through a second argument, or our first argument we're going to change instead of zero or the first position. We'll change it to position five. We'll hit save and go back over and refresh. So now it says ly hit what we aim for because we started at position five. Now, what if we started at position zero, but we only wanted to get the first five characters? Well, we can do that too, just by simply passing our third or optional argument, which would be in this case, the numeric five. Switch back over and refresh. And now it says we on. Now, at first glance, you might think, okay, this is only four characters, but there's a space in between the we and the o in, so that actually counts as a character. So a space is technically a character for us. So we and then space o in is a total of five characters. 
The next one we want to look at is string position. So str pos. Let's switch back over and look at the manual and we'll go to the search str pos. Here it is. So this is going to find the first position or the position of the first occurrence of a substring inside of a string. So they've used the keywords here or the, the array names to make a little bit of sense in the description that says needle and haystack. So there's a phrase called looking for a needle in a haystack. Well, our haystack is our full string and the needle is how we, what we want to find. So it's going to be a particular occurrence using the needle inside of the haystack. So let's take a look at it in code and see what we get back, okay? So here we're gonna switch back over to workspaces and we're going to actually comment out this line just for any confusion and then go echo and then str pos and then our haystack, which is the first thing that goes through is our phrase. Then if we look back over at our documentation, the needle is also required. So we'll actually have to pass through a needle. Now, in this case, if you scroll down here, it says if the needle is not a string, it's then converted to an integer and applied as the ordinal value of a character. So it's expecting that you would put through a string normally. So you can put through an integer, but in this case, we're going to put through a string. So we're going to put through hit as a string. So quote, H-I-T, and another single quote, and then hit semicolon. So we'll save that and switch back over to our preview. Okay, so it returned to us a integer value of eight. So it's at position eight. Let's look at the docs and see what it means by position. So it's going to return to us a string position, okay? So it is a string position starting at zero, not one. So if you notice here, it says, all, also note that string position start at zero and not one. So for us, when it says eight, it means that the W on line three is actually zero. So if we count all the way out to the H, the H arrives at integer eight in a zero based index. So that's how we find it. Now, if we were to say change this to Bob and hit save, and then we go back and refresh, what we're gonna get is nothing. But if we were to var dump this, instead of printing it or instead of echoing it to the screen, let's see what we get. We get a Boolean false. If we look at our manual here, we'll actually see that it returns false if the needle was not found, which is exactly what we're expecting. So we can search for a string inside of another string and get the position that it starts from and then return the string starting at that point or do any kind of other functions that we need with this. So we can actually combine the two functions we just used. So let's do that now. So here we have echo substring, which is fine. We're gonna to continue to use that, but I'm actually gonna move it below here. And then I'm going to do a string position, but I'm going to assign it to a variable called start. And then I'm going to search for a particular phrase, which in our case is going to be hit, right? And then what I want to do is actually echo the word hit until the end of the sentence. So uh, in substring, I remove my final argument, and instead of passing an integer to line 15 as the second argument, I'll pass through my variable, which is an integer value called start. Let's save that and go back over to our page and refresh and see what we get. So now we get hit what we aim for, which is exactly what I was looking for. So you can see by combining two different string functions in one little bit of code, we can actually get some very powerful, powerful results.